Can you guys talk about reducing costs for RDS? Um, so right sizing again is the is the story here. I think um, it's uh, it's very often the case that people will throw money at their database uh, in order to improve performance, whereas what they actually ought to be doing is indexing their data properly. Um, like that is one area where actually spending engineering time probably pays off, um, particularly if you're using an ORM or you've never thought about indices before. Um, you know, th th you could. We've worked with customers who are spending sort of sixty thousand dollars a month on databases, uh, and kind of you know quartering that just by adding indexes in the right place. So um, make sure that you understand um, like how your database is being used, profile your queries, um, improve them that way. Um, secondly, um, it's very easy to spend a lot of money that is RDS adjacent um, by funneling all of your RDS uh, query logs into CloudWatch logs. It's very easy to turn on in the console. It's one click, um, and that one click will probably add another four figures onto your uh, onto your bill every month. So uh, be careful that you're not doing that. So yeah, right sizing. Don't log every query. Great. And uh, Rob, anything to add for that? Uh, let's assume that you've done everything that, that John suggested, which is all all completely correct. Um, <laughs> then one of the things that you know I have seen happen before is there's typically one or small number of queries which really take up almost all of the um, the, the workload within the database. So, you know, ignoring the kind of the obvious, um, trying to put some cache in front of it, if that's not possible, is typically them queries actually have um, very strongly defined access patterns. They're called to your application and it's well known how it's accessed. That then is possibly an indication you should be start splitting that data out from that database and using a different type of database that can scale a little bit easier or you can, cust you can create or use the correct database to serve that particular application or access pattern. Uh, that's significantly more engineering effort then. One other um, small tip that, that came up when I asked my team about uh, some of these questions earlier on, um, we've seen, uh, so if you're using traditional RDS, and I, it, this may be solved now, but it wasn't um, fairly recently. Um, if you are, if, if you scale up your RDS storage, um, because you're expecting a lot of traffic and you're you're trying to solve that problem um, and you maybe do something that clears out a lot of old data, um, scaling back in that storage is actually not possible to achieve without doing a MySQL dump or a Postgres dump out into a fresh database that's been resized. Um, so it may well be that once you've cleared out data that you don't need, the only way of reclaiming some cost is, is by managing storage that way. Um, the other RDS tip, I think, is um, similar to one that Rob mentioned earlier on, which is that um, different storage uh, has different costs characteristics, um, and provisioned IOPS are not always necessary uh, because the number of IOPS that you get per gigabyte um, scales with the number of gigabytes um, based on other storage types. So you can buy more SSD storage and get the IOPS you need for cheaper than buying provisioned IOPS storage of, uh, of exactly the size you need. So look at those trade-offs as well.